Welcome back to our video series on the play framework using Scala. Now that you have an introduction to React, we want to use React in order to make another implementation of our task list, a fourth implementation here. So we have this React code. I'm not going to delete it, but I am going to comment it out because it's not going to do much for us right now. And I know that I will need some form of the React DOM render to put stuff uh, at the top of the page and replace our React root. So what are the components that we need to create here? Well, we had version three, and in version three we had both a login page and a task list uh, appearing on the page. And we know that we're going to need those components at the very least. So two things that we will have to put inside of here are a login page and a task list component. And we need, obviously, to convert those over to, to React. Um, in order to make some of the functionality work, though, there's something else that we will need somewhat similar to version 3, and that is all these hidden elements that gave us routes. Now, remember, we put these in our view, so while our React page doesn't have much in it, um, we want to have this information in the view so that we can use reverse routing. Okay, because if we don't have reverse routing, uh, then we're hard coding in whatever routes we want. So I'm just going to put these in our, our view for version 4 uh, temporarily. So, how do we create a component? Well, remember there are two ways, depending upon whether it is stateful or stateless. The first component I want to create is our login page, because that's kind of what would pop up when we first get to the page. And so... Let's make a login component. It extends react.component. And it has to have a render method that returns a uh, React element. Okay, so we're going to call CE in here. Now, what do we want this to look like? We want it to look like this login page here. Now, because we're not using JSX, our login page is going to have calls to create element and not all of these HTML tags. If we had been using JSX, it would actually be pretty straightforward to just copy this code, move it over into our JavaScript, and tweak it in some minor ways. That's not what we are doing here, though. Um, we are not using JSX because we don't want to bring Babel into our tool chain. Uh, so we need to find another way of, of doing this. We have to write it out kind of the long way. And it turns out because it is the long way, I went ahead and did that offline. So we look over here, we have a login, a break, a username, a break. So I made a cell for a div and it has a login and an H2 and a break and a username and then an input, et cetera, et cetera. The message spans I have currently commented out because we're not uh, doing anything with them yet. It's quite possible we want to do something with them, but but it's not there yet. Um, and in fact, that is part of why I made this a a class so that it can be stateful. Uh, remember, you can use a function for a stateless component, but things like these messages would need to be part of the state of our login page. Okay, so. So this was just a conversion from the HTML into creating React elements. And in order to make this work, we need to, instead of making a div here, I want to make a login component. And it will take two arguments of null. Right now it has no props. We're not using props anywhere in here. And it has no children. And so with that in place, we can refresh and yes, load four, which was our path there, has the page that we want. Okay, it looks almost the same as version three. Ah, hey, we have a version three up there that I don't currently have in my version four. Um, and that's probably actually appearing in this. I guess we could 
grab that if we wanted to. Um, I'm not going to though. So, and that does show us that we have a difference in our pages. Okay, so that's a login, uh, but it's only the view for the login. This doesn't really do anything. We also have this problem, so I put on click handlers going to a this.login and a this.create user. And if we click them, we get nice error messages because there is no login function in there. Uh, so we're trying to get a login. Um, we're trying to call an undefined, treat it as a function. Um, we also have the issue that we talked about in our last video of the fact that when a field is edited, we need to get the text out and deal with that in a uh, in a handler. Um, so, and that is because we want the values to be stored as part of the state. Now, this has four text fields inside of it, in addition to the two buttons. And so, at the very least, I need a state here that has the values for those four text fields. Okay, just remember, did I try to be a good JavaScript developer and put semicolons? <clears throat> after spending so much time with Scala. I really don't like putting semicolons at the end of lines. Okay, um, and now we can say this dot state equals, so login name, login pass, create name, create pass seem like reasonably good. Login name, oh, then actually login name is going to start off as the empty string login pass is also an empty string create name is an empty string create pass is an empty string and I need it so that when these are created they have a value that is equal to those things so their value is this dot state dot login name and similar for the password the create name and a create pass we will also need to attach handlers to these things that do um, the change handling. So um, let's see. There are some, as opposed to making four handlers for this, uh, because each of these has an ID that happens to match the key up there, we can probably get away with having a single change handler. Change handler takes an event and we will attach on change is e rocket this dot change handler of e. Style-wise, there is a part of me that doesn't like my lines getting this long. But there is also a part of me that uh, doesn't want to add much length to the render. One thing that I should note here is that we could break this login component. So we're making a single login component, and it's reasonably long because it has it's kind of hold, handles two different functionalities. One is the login, and one is the create user. And we could theoretically break this up into, so we'd have three components, one that is like a login page component, one that is the login it's, uh, aspect of it, and one that is the create user aspect of it. Uh, we'll see how I'm feeling. It's possible we'll come back and refactor at the end to try to keep each of our components a little bit smaller and simpler. So just to check this, um, 
I want to do a console.log of e dot uh, target and its ID okay, because that is the field that I want to pull out of these things um, because what we're changing is one of those fields sure Let's refresh. Okay, so note it's giving me login name here as I type. It's not updating this because we didn't change that part of our state. That's, and you can hear me typing here and it's not popping up. That seems like a weird behavior, but that's because we haven't completed the loop. Uh, we'll come back in the next video and we'll make it so that that change handler actually updates that field and makes our state happy.